All right, it is mid-September and probably one of the last really nice warm days we're gonna get before summer comes to a close. Um, and it, that means it is monitor washing day. So what I'm gonna do here is really quickly go through the process of disconnecting the monitor chassis on this uh, Toshiba Pure Flat from my new Net City cabinet that I picked up recently. Um, mostly for my own documentation so I remember where everything was routed and how to reconnect it in the right order afterwards. You know, I'm creating a little mental checklist, but it always helps to have video documentation. And maybe someone else will find this useful as well. I've already got my little handmade, uh, you know, uh, what you call it, um, discharge tool uh, ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead first and discharge the, uh, uh, what is this thing called? Good Lord. The uh, anode cap uh, right here on the monitor. Um, you know, this is a fairly modern CRT. I imagine it discharges itself, but it can never be, you can never be too safe. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and then proceed to disconnect everything else. Let's uh, move that so we can see. All right. I'm gonna do the one hand behind the back thing. Try and do this as best I can. There we go, one side out. And other side out. Stick it in here one more time just to be safe. I am wearing sandals. I should probably be wearing thick soled shoes, but you know, whatever. Um, safe enough. I am satisfied with that. Now let's go through and disconnect everything else. Um, so we got this anode cap. We can move that out of the way. This thing is absolutely filthy. Probably never been cleaned in its life. Who knows if the back of this shroud was ever even taken off before. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the chassis. I'm just going to disconnect it while I have the whole monitor frame in here. Um, one less thing to worry about breaking while I'm moving this really heavy tube around. Uh, and the first thing is the power. That's right here in the corner. Squeeze this little tab and pull it straight up. And then the degaussing uh, coil is connected right here. Handily, they're zip tied together, so it's hard to lose where they're supposed to be. Um, and then we have the deflection yoke, and I believe this is so we got yellow on the left and green on the right. Important to remember that, or it's going to be flipped around. I think this is the horizontal. Um, I could be wrong. It's either the horizontal or the vertical. Uh, and this is the other one right here with red on top and blue on the bottom. Take that sucker out. And we will move these around here. They were, just for future reference, routed behind the flyback and then back forward. I don't know if it matters, but I like to route the cables the same way that they were when I put it back together. So, um, yeah, behind the flyback. Uh, then we've got here, this connects to the neck board, which we're not going to disconnect right now. This bit does have to come off. This is the ground going to the neck board push that little tab in. I might need two hands for this, so let's see if I can do this. Need a third hand. There we go. Got it off. Another little push the tab in thing. Now we've got what I think is sync. I'm not actually sure what this little two uh, cable is, but it's coming off of the high impedance uh, video signal. I'm guessing it's sync. Pull that straight up. That's that one's off. Um, just get this one out of the way. We're gonna disconnect. This is the remote board. Let's move the camera down so we can actually see it. Oh my god! There we go. Disconnect that. If I can manage it. Oh my god! I don't want to. I'm struggling to not fry too heavily. I don't want to jiggle these around. If they're cold solder joints, I can really mess up something and have to reflow everything on the board, which I should do anyway, but you know, can't be too careful. So this is disconnected. That goes to the remote board in the front. There's a lot of slack on this cable. Not sure why they didn't like tie that up together, but it is what it is. Um, now we've got the high impedance 
connector. I'm going to try and do this left-handed. Um, there we go. And the low impedance VGA connector. All right, and that goes right here to the VGA. Now these little bits right here connected to the frame, we're just going to leave. Um, the chassis itself will come out uh, independent of that. I think, I think, I think that's everything. Um, I'm going to disconnect the neck board now. I'm going to use two hands for this to be extra careful. I'm just try and <laughs> wrestle this monitor with, or the camera within my armpit. Very extra super careful. Slowly and surely. There we go. And I'm going to just let that dangle here for now. All right, and now the tricky bit, well, not really tricky anymore because we move stuff out of the way. This screw and this screw, which have the zip tied uh, power cable being routed over here, um, need to come off. And then there's a little metal bar that you can move out of the way and free the chassis. So I'm going to do that next. Um, take this off. Where I put my other bit? One at a time. There we go. It's hard to do it while looking at the screen. It's hard to just look right at it. I need a doofus right now. Um, all right, there's one and the other one. And these, I believe, are not actually Phillips. They're like some Japanese standard. So. Although I'm using a Phillips bit to free them, you want to be very easy on the trigger so you don't strip it. It's not an exact fit with any of the American bits you might have. Um, so we got those out and we're just going to rest those here. Now this little metal plate can slide up and out and the chassis should be free to move. So I'm going to have to Set this down again over here on the Astro sitting to rest the tripod while I finagle this thing out. I believe everything is disconnected. I'm just going to double check that there is nothing else that is going to be tying this to the rest of the cabinet or the monitor. And I'm actually going to route put these up here just to get them out of the way, the yoke connectors. Um, so they're not dangling in front of me. Come on, come on guys, work with me here. There we go. All right, so it's gonna come up and slide down. And then slide it over to the left here. Degaussing ring or degaussing whatever the cable. And there we go. Chassis is out. Set this over here. All right. Now well, it's all done. Let's uh, get some of these cables out of the way. Um, this remote board cable is quite annoying where it's at right now. Let's move that down here below the ground. Get this freed up. Come on. All right. So the cables here are going to have to get detached as well. Um, amazingly, these haven't snapped off like all the other cable ties in my other cab. These are plastic and they get very brittle. Alright, so we're going to disconnect the VGA. Just look what I'm filming so I'm not just filming the ground while I talk. Um, that's going to go down here. Disconnect this Molex here, or 
amp connector, I'm not really sure the technical term, and this one here. And I think everything is disconnected. I just need to make sure this bottom, well, actually, no. Unfortunately, the yoke, or whatever, not the yoke, the, uh, the gousing thing is, well, you know what, that can stay, duh. I'm not thinking that's not connected to the cabinet, that's connected to the monitor, so that's gonna stay together. All right, all I have to do is get this tie under here, which I can barely see. I'm gonna have to, ugh, get down on my knees here. All right. <clears throat> so, where is that going? Okay. Yeah. Feed that through here. And that's free. Okay. Oh, there's two of them. Okay. Um, get that one as well. Alright. Sheesh. Alright, so that is no longer connected, and neither is. There's the power. There's the remote board. I don't know why it's not focusing. Stop that. There we go. Remote board and power are now disconnected. Uh, this looks like it just came right off. So maybe there was a third that it was. Oh yeah, that was that was up over here. Anyway, that's all disconnected. I believe we can now just move the monitor frame itself once we disconnect the bolts on the front. This one annoyingly is missing one up here. This one's intact. This one, the guy didn't even bother to put it on all the way. There's a little plastic bit on the back, which I cannot get it to focus on here. Um, there we go. That little white thing. It's supposed to be on that, not in front of it. And uh, that's why this was protruding a little bit, and I think it was causing some stress on the shroud. Um, it was causing it to bow inward a little bit. So hopefully when I put this back on correctly, that problem will be fixed. Um, yeah, next step, I'm gonna take off this monitor, set it next to his friend over there and wash them both before it gets too late in the afternoon here. Wish me luck.